By April 1945, the Eastern Front was fast approaching Berlin. The Germans had been in steady but stubborn retreat for two years, since the calamitous Battle of Stalingrad had ended with a German defeat in the winter of 1942-43. The Germans had failed to regain the initiative against the Red Army, which had grown in size, weapons and experience, and had launched a final massive winter offensive in January 1945 from bridgeheads in central Poland, sweeping 700 kilometres west towards Germany, smashing army groups Centre and A. By late January 1945, the Soviets reached the Oder River, close to Kustrin, just 100 kilometres east of Berlin. Hitler hastily withdrew the 6th SS Panzer Army from the Ardennes in Belgium, where his great offensive against the Americans and British had failed to produce the desired results and redeployed them in the east. However, Stalin decided not to immediately push on Berlin, as during the Yalta Conference with Winston Churchill and President Roosevelt, he noticed that the issue of Austria had not been settled by the Allied powers and he smelled an opportunity to extend Soviet influence to Vienna and the Danube Basin. Stalin also wanted to build up his forces for the final push on Berlin, and was concerned about substantial German units on the flanks in Prussia and Pomerania. Stalin's decision gave the Germans a short breathing space to begin fortifying the approaches to Berlin and the city itself, neglected for too long already. Three Soviet fronts, with two and a half million men, over 6,000 tanks and self-propelled guns, seven and a half thousand aircraft, 41,600 artillery guns and mortars, plus over 3,000 Katyusha rocket launchers, would be flung against the final German defences around Berlin. One natural feature remained between the Soviets and the outer defences of Berlin itself, the Zelo Heights, a range of small hills from 30 to 60 metres in height, about 90 kilometres east of Berlin, that overlook the Oderbruck, the western floodplain of the Oder River. Running from the city of Kustrin through the heights to Berlin was Reichstrasse 1. The area of the Zelo Heights fell under the command of the German 9th Army, under General Theodor Busser. It had 14 battered and understrength divisions covering a large area, numbering about 110,000 troops and 587 tanks and assault guns, opposing Marshal Georgi Zhukov's 1st Belarusian Front of 1 million men and over 3,000 tanks. Tying in with the 9th Army was the German 3rd Panzer Army under General Hassel von Manteuffel. Together, the 9th and 3rd Armies were known as Army Group Vistula, under the command of the defensive fighting genius General Gotthard Heinrichi. Heinrichi predicted that the main Soviet thrust would come along the highway, Reichstrasse 1, through the Zelo Heights. The Oder River line would be held by a thin screen of troops, while the Zelo Heights were strongly defended. The Oder's floodplain was already boggy from the spring thaw, and German engineers had released water from a reservoir upstream to turn it into a quagmire to hinder the Soviet advance. Behind the heights were three lines of defences, all the way back to Berlin. The troops were a mixture. Some were experienced and determined, who had been fighting the Soviets for years. Many were new recruits and replacements many combed out of other services, such as the Luftwaffe and the Navy. Nazi propaganda had inculcated them with the belief that they were defending the civilian population from a barbarous enemy, and recent Soviet atrocities meant that the Germans would fight very hard to keep them out of Berlin. Hitler had made a final visit to the front from his Berlin bunker on the 3rd of March 1945, visiting General Busser at Schloss Harnekop. Zhukov's attack began in the pre-dawn hours of the 16th of April 1945. 
a massive artillery barrage raged for 30 minutes to a depth of 10 to 12 kilometers into the German lines. Soviets tried to use searchlights reflected off clouds to produce artificial moonlight, a technique pioneered by the British, but they failed, simply silhouetting the attacking troops who suffered heavy casualties. The barrage largely failed because Heinrichi had ordered most troops pulled back from the first line to prevent heavy losses. The Soviet 5th Shock Army struck on the north side of Reichstrasse 1, while the 8th Guards Army struck south of the road. In the 5th Shock Army sector, five Soviet rifle divisions spearheaded the attack, running into one regiment of the 309th Infantry Division and two regiments of the 9th Fauxchamjäger Division, or Parachute Division. To the south of the highway, seven Soviet rifle divisions of the 8th Guards Army, supported by tanks and assault guns, faced the German 303rd Infantry Division and elements of the 20th Panzergrenadier Division and Panzer Division Munscherberg. Crossing the Oder floodplain was made more difficult for the Soviets by the Hauptgraben Canal, the base of the Salo Heights. The heights were also steep enough that tanks could only climb several well-defended routes. In the 8th Guards Army sector, accurate German artillery clobbered the Soviet infantry as they struggled across the Oderberg. Only one intact bridge remained across the Hauptgraben Canal, and Soviet engineers laboured under intense German artillery fire to try and build more crossings. Marshal Zhukov under pressure from Stalin to capture Berlin quickly, decided to commit his armoured operational reserve early, instead of waiting for the infantry to capture the heights. This was a big mistake, as the additional tanks were stuck in huge traffic jams, trying to reach the front and cross the marshland. In the 8th Guards Army sector, the Soviet infantry and supporting tanks became trapped against the Hauptgraben Canal. Panthers of the Munscherberg Panzer Division picked off 16 IS-2 heavy tanks in one engagement. By midnight on the 16th of April, Soviet infantry had managed to make some penetrations on the edges of the heights. Dozens of Soviet tanks and self-propelled guns were knocked out by German Panthers and other tanks of the Munscherberg Panzer Division or 88mm flak guns used in the ground roll. The 8th Guards Army alone lost 55 IS-2s and 22 T-34s, plus another 53 self-propelled guns that day. The 5th Shock Army suffered similar losses. Rifle divisions did manage to secure the town of Lechin. Vicious fighting occurred along the railway line from Langsol, meeting heavy resistance from Fauxchamjäger Regiment 26 and elements of the Munscherberg Panzer Division but the Soviets managed to fight their way into Grusow and Verbig. But General Busser and his beleaguered 9th Army had succeeded in halting Zhukov's offensive on the first day. The two units, the 303rd Infantry Division and the 9th Fauxchamjäger Division, had suffered high casualties. Two understrength divisions were sent forward to help, the 18th and 25th Panzergrenadier Divisions. On the 17th of April, the Soviets made advances to the north of the town of Zelo. By noon, Soviet armour made it to the top of the heights at Friedersdorf and Dolgelin. The Germans attempted to counterattack using a battle group of the 23rd SS Panzergrenadier Division Nederland and Panzerjagd Brigade Dora from Diedersdorf to Zelo, but they were beaten back. The Soviets then captured Zelo town in the early afternoon. By late in the afternoon, the 5th Shock Army had punched through the German 2nd defence line and was attacking the 3rd line at Obersdorf. But overall, the 9th Army still held most of the Zelau Heights, blocking the main Soviet thrust on Berlin. However, some German divisions were at the point of disintegrating. 
The next day, the 18th of April, the Zelo Heights position became untenable. To the south, the Soviet 1st Ukrainian Front pushed back the left flank of the German defences, the 4th Panzer Army, the German line crumbling. Heinrichi's brilliant defence of the Zelo Heights was undone by the weak defences to the south. The Soviets advanced with heavy losses, bypassing the heights, and in the north, running into German counterattacks by the 11th and 23rd SS Panzergrenadier Divisions and SS Heavy Panzer Battalion 503 with King Tiger tanks. But by nightfall, elements of the 1st Belarusian Front had reached the German 3rd defense line before Berlin. On the 19th of April, the Soviet 1st Belarusian Front smashed through the remaining German defenses on the heights and broke out into the open plain beyond. There was nothing much left to stop them before they reached Berlin, which would happen within a few days. The battle for the Zelo Heights was a costly affair for the Soviets, who lost about 30,000 men killed and hundreds of tanks knocked out or damaged. The German 9th Army lost 12,000 killed, but much of its remaining Panzer divisions lost their last tanks in the fighting. The remnants pulled back, some to join the final battle for the city itself. Berlin now faced imminent encirclement by the Soviet army, and then attack. Please subscribe and share. If you like being read to, visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Link in the description box below. You can also help support my channels via PayPal and Patreon. See the description for details.